to be with you all again, faithful viewers of Radio Tele Solidarité. My name is Dr. Mirlan Cléosier, and I am extending a warm welcome to you all on behalf of Radio Tele Solidarité. Today we have a great show for you. However, before we get started, we're going to have a quick blessing with one of our panelists, Miriam Fleuriska. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let us pray, right? Bed. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come together in this meeting and sharing the good news with others out there. We ask that you bless us and guide us and grant us the wisdom to speak clearly. You help us through each and every one of our activities into the future that we can continue to be passionate, strong, and vibrant people. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miriam. Don't forget that this show is brought to you by Radio Tele Solidarité. And as a reminder, the show will be broadcasted on cable vision in New York and in New Jersey. Today, I'm excited to be with an amazing group of young, bright women. Uh, I called you guys the hope of the future. And on this show, we are discussing culture clash. We're bridging the gap between the Haitian, where we're going to aim to bridge the gap between Haitian parents and their first generation American children. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce my panelists. Ladies, take over. Introduce yourselves, please. I'm going to start with Anne. Hello, my name is Anne Ozias. I'm 23. I just graduated nursing school in May. Um, I'm a nurse now. I'm a school nurse um, at a high school. And um, yeah, 
is there anything else I should say? Oh, which parish you're from? And St. Hughes Catholic Church in Huntington. And I'm also a catechist there. And I've been a catechist there for about seven years now, I want to say. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. Alexandrine? Hi, guys. My name is Alexandrine Lebrun. Um, I am from St. Martha's Parish in Uniondale. I still live in Uniondale. I dabbled in everything in the church. I was an altar server, youth group member, choir member. Um, once I stopped serving, I trained the altar servers. I was a praise dancer, but now I train praise dancers. Mm -hmm. I work with the children liturgy as a leader. Um, I am a Eucharistic minister, although because of COVID, I haven't done it in a while. Um, so I graduated from Freeport High School. I went on to CW Post, then Farmingdale State College, where I graduated with my bachelor's in biochemistry. I am now studying medicine at St. John's University. I'm so excited to be here and to have a good talk. Awesome. Jennifer. Hi, my name is Jennifer Brizus. I am 15 years old and I'm an I'm a high school student at Westbury High School. I'm only in 10th grade. And I'm from, I'm, I go to St. Bridget's Church in Westbury. And I'm in the youth choir. I sing, I dance. And I'm an altar server, but you know, because of Corona, I can't really serve anymore. But I'm excited to talk today with you guys. Awesome, thank you, Jennifer. Tanya? Hi, I'm Tanya, I'm 24. I uh, just graduated from also St. John's um, in May with my master's in accounting, and um, I'm part of the St. Boniface uh, Parish in Elmont. Um, I also live in Elmont, I've been part of the parish for about 10 years now, and um, I, very involved in the church. I'm a choir member, youth group member, altar server, pretty much everything. So I'm really excited to be here and to have this conversation. Great. Good afternoon. Uh, my name, well, I go by Miriam Pliska, though my name is Taisha. Um, I'm 18 years old. I just graduated in the past May from St. Anthony's High School, and I'm currently in my first year of undergrad. Um, <laughs> I am from St. Anne's Parish. I've done just about everything there from the very beginning. We were one of the earliest kids in the youth group and I've done the youth choir up until it was disbanded. I've done altar serving, lecturing, um, you know, cantering. I've sung psalms. I've done Eucharistic ministry and even up until the point where I left altar serving, I was still an active member with all the kids there. Um, because of COVID, as you all said, there's not much I can do, but I'm very much looking forward to getting back to it once everything is up. Great. I thank you all for being with me today. Uh, we have a great topic, I believe, because I believe there's a great deal of frustration between first generation American children with their parents. So we're here to basically express our opinions and our views, our frustrations, so that our Haitian parents can understand the struggle. So we are highlighting the struggle that you guys are having, trying to meld into the American identity as uh, first generation Americans while living in a household with, strong, with a strong American, um, Haitian culture. So I, I think that with first generation American children, it, the conflict comes with trying to um, basically put the two cultures together. And parents with their Haitian culture, being here as immigrants, you know, it's really tough at times for them to understand the, you know, the frustrations that you guys are enduring as first American, uh, first generation Americans. So, with that said, I have, um, I have one question that I will pose to all of you and then we'll follow up with um, other questions. Uh, what I want to ask you first is, what are some of the issues that are causing strife within the family? 
and you you got you guys can hear each other so perhaps each of you will you know discuss one particular issue so i'm gonna start with tanya since you were the last one really to introduce yourself being that miriam did the blessing so i'm gonna start with you so what are some of the uh, of the issues causing strife within your family um i think um in my family in particular or i guess in a lot of patient families it's the cultural um discrepancies that we have with each other so um obviously when I mean, our parents you know they're immigrants from haiti they grew up with a certain mindset they grew up with certain traditional values and growing up in america as americans going to school we were exposed to all different other types of people different environment and it's kind of hard sometimes for the parent and child to like relate on some of the issues that we face every day and it's like wait but i didn't go through that i was growing up and like it's kind of um it's hard to just kind of grasp that um, dynamic between like parent and child, especially when the cultures are so different. So I think that's like one of the big issues. It's like the cultural differences. Okay. Jennifer? Yeah, like I feel like um, it's all misunderstanding and because they don't try to like understand and where we're coming from when like we try to tell them certain things and i feel like they just try to you know be more open to us and i think it goes both ways because you know we're not we're their children so you know it's kind of like oh my gosh why do they do this and that but you know they should try to explain to us why they do certain things instead of just doing it and not giving us the reason and they should just try to understand us and have more conversations with us you know just so that we can understand each other and see where we're coming from it's more like saying um do as i say without um understanding why the logic behind it because you're seeing it differently yeah right Okay, um, anyone else would like to, if, if there's anything different that they would like to respond, what, what's causing the most strife within the family? Alexandrine, go ahead. So I was thinking about it, and I, the one thing that jumped at me was their parenting style. I feel like they think it's a one, one style for all the situation. Haitians or Haitian parents or they have the tough parenting thing down pack and it's I think sometimes you have to adjust. There are situations where the tough parenting does not work or it's not as effective as uh, open communication, you know, pros and cons and such things. So I feel like they're set on the one style and they take it to the very end. So I think that's what jumped at me when I was thinking about the conflict that we sometimes have. And like all the other girls said, it's communication, the cultural difference, but definitely the parenting style. They're not as fluid as other parents. So in other words, are you saying that um, there is this, um, what would I say? Be, because you guys tend to, the first generation um, Americans tend to adopt more of the American culture and break away from the parents' traditions, there's this um, push and pull that's happening, and there's not much understanding as to why I'm feeling this way, why I'm saying that way, so it's creating frustration without much communication. So it seems like Haitian parents have blinders on. They see it one way and that's it. Do you guys agree with that? Definitely, yeah. All right, all right. Okay, um, Anne, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was going to say how, like, um, I also feel like it's kind of hard to have, uh, I guess, a good relationship with them where you could go and say what you want and, like, be, like, completely, like, transparent. Because if we do, like, well, for me, it's like, if you do, it's like, bash, but, like, it's just, like, a whole nother argument and, like, they twist the words and it's not really what you really had meant to say but in their way of understanding what we said it's a complete different meaning and I'm like no that's not really what I meant but it, 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 like at some point you're just like okay you guys got it 
and that's the just the end of the conversation okay do you would you agree all of you that if you try to express your feelings and you try to assert yourself and say yes or no i'm not doing this or i'm doing that it's taken as though you being disrespectful i cannot yeah. tell you how many lectures i've gotten into just for one thing and meaning nothing by it and then the parents go in to a whole lecture about it and you're like wait no i just just those words just the translation of those words nothing else well uh, i can relate although i am not i was not born in america i was born in haiti but um i came here when i was very young so i can totally relate with what you guys are um talking about um but we also have to understand that haitian parents upon arriving to america you know just like other any immigrant from any other group um they have to learn a, a new language they have to assimilate to a new culture um and and their beliefs are totally different so as an adult going into a new culture it's it's something that is really nerve-wracking and very hard to learn new as they say new tricks you know when you're an old dog so um do you uh, you know for for not because i know i'm gonna get this from parents that you know i'm i'm like siding with you guys more and it's almost like an attack on the parents because i want you that guys to also understand that as a parent think you know see see it from a different perspective that the way they see it that's the way they were brought up as well it's not just the culture the culture is one thing but it's also your experience as a child yourself growing up in that country and then the way you were brought up so it's it's really very tough miriam you wanted to say something yeah um i just wanted to carry on that personally i think just the experiences and the culture and the tough parenting has helped really shape such high expectations parents have for their first generation kids that are just sometimes mind-boggling and other times you're like yeah i mean i get it the place you've come from the background you have i understand why you want this from me but it's also quite difficult to you know reach Another question I have for you young ladies. Uh, do you feel like as you guys are getting older, you identify more to a certain extent with the American culture versus the Haitian culture? And because of that, because you identify more with one culture as opposed to the other, that's what's really creating the frustration because your parents would like for you to adapt more of the um, Haitian culture and it's really not happening. And you find yourself in, in the middle of this thing where you're, you, you're trying to balance the two in some ways. Do you think, is that what's causing the frustration for you guys? Anyone, anyone of you can answer. I think so. The, obviously, for I like to think that I'm the perfect balance between both Haitian and the American culture, but it's also the fact that um, certain parents, it's hard for them to acknowledge the positive things that we've embraced of the American culture. I think they have more of a negative um, perspective or a negative view of the culture, of the American culture, but yet sometimes we, we embrace the positive side of the culture and even then it's hard for them to um admit that you know mm -hmm. yeah that's true uh, but you know i think in fairness i can i can really say that first generation americans adapt some aspects of the um haitian cultures you know such as the food the music would you guys say so would you guys agree with that yeah and so um so I think that's an open door for, for you guys to uh, find some common ground with them. And they have to also keep an open mind to really try and understand, you know, the American culture that you guys are basically, you were born here and you are, you guys, you know, obviously you are growing up here. So if, if they were to be more uh, open open-minded you know i don't want to be disrespectful i think you know we would bridge the gap a little would you guys say so 
Okay. Stop, you know, nodding the heads. I want to hear, you know, thoughts here. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to move on to our next uh, question. And uh, this question is for, I would say, um, let's see, Tanya, because I haven't heard from you uh, in a few minutes. So I want you to be the first one to answer this question. In your opinion, do you think the parents treat their the male versus female siblings differently? Is there, a, a, let's say, I would say double standards as to the way they're, you know, the way they treat you girls versus the way they would treat your brothers? Um, so for me personally, I do have a younger brother. Um, he's four years younger than me. So, I mean, growing up, like with the brother and with Asian parents, I personally didn't really see any um, double standard. Really, like if, like if I had to clean, like he had to clean. If I did the dishes, he would do it one night. I do it next night. Like it was more like um, a partnership. Like we took turns. It was there wasn't really not that I can remember of like an actual like double standard of like I, he can do certain things that I can or I can and he can't. Mm -hmm. um, but I do um, acknowledge that possibly in like other Haitian households, households, there is that um, difference in between the male and female um, siblings of the families. And I know sometimes even in other cultures really, like um, they treat the, tend to treat the male kind of with the more of, more of a lax kind of um, way in which like they can kind of get away with a little bit more than the girls can and the girls are kind of held up to a more of a higher standard like you you should be you know you should walk like this do this and whereas the males are kind of more like oh it's fine you can do you know what you want to do so i know miriam doesn't have any brother she's been blessed with you know three other sisters so anyone else has brothers in the group which one of you has brothers Okay, so yes, Tanya, you've already stated that, so thank you for that. And would you like to elaborate on what Tanya said? Um, well, I'm the oldest. My brother is uh, the youngest. I think he's 10. So it's like exactly what she said. Like my mom, she's um, always taught him how to clean, like do your dishes, and not to really depend on anybody. Like you can't just sit there and say, can you go get this for me? Like she will tell you like, no, go get what you need go pick up. and it's the same thing for me and my sister too like we were literally cleaning all the time we do the dishes there's no really certain standards in that aspect as well okay how about you alexandrine i also have two older well in my case they're older than me so i had two older brother and i was the only girl and the youngest and my mother was the primary rule setter for the household and um she came down with the strong hand on both whether girls or, or well in my case girl or boys so if she had a rule that you had to be home after school to do your homework it went for both ways for both me and my two older brothers so she didn't really make a difference but um there were sometimes because i'm the youngest and i'm the only girl so she she was kind of um more um attentive or more of more as in um on top of the things that I would do, but it wasn't a difference um, of be of me being a girl versus them being boys. It was just because I was the youngest, so she was kind of made sure I stayed in line. But overall, her rules applied to everyone, or her rules are set, and everyone had to follow them. That is good because, in my experience, it was the total opposite with the double standards. You know, the boys could stay out as late as they wanted to, and the girls had to be home at a certain time. They could bring their friends home, their female friends home, but we couldn't bring our boyfriends home. When I say boyfriend, I don't mean a boyfriend who had romantic feelings with just boys who were, you know, friendly with. Um, so, yeah, I, I did experience the double standard, so I am totally happy for you guys that you did not have to return. Line of Melchior. 
resolve some of those um, um, differences that um, in, in terms of, I know, um, I believe it was Jennifer who said that it's really because of a lack of understanding. Um, I, I believe there are ways we can actually, um, things that we can actually do to mend the gap. Um, and I would like for us to discuss some of those things. Um, First question, before we go any further, do you believe that the religious 
viewpoints or beliefs of your parents are uh, some of the reasons that you 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 guys are experiencing this this um uh strife the the frustrations i'm gonna start with miriam i have a feeling she's ready to get started on this <laughs> question <laughs> it's uh, a good question though right do their religious it does sometimes especially if um your parents are lecturing you um religion does sometimes come in pretty quickly mm-hmm. like say you've done something that might have been minor on a regular day and other days your parents are just like the lord says such and such a thing like uh, all this biblical stuff it really does depend on the day how the parents are doing and a lot of other factors anybody else would like to continue with that how your parents religious beliefs um you know your upbringing the way they raise you and is, is that causing a strife between you and the parents? Um, to per- personally, I don't think it's the problem at all because um, I think religious views, it was something that, um, that I always shared with my parents. We were always uniform and on the same page. Um, it's just that um, I guess my pray sometimes when my faith was shaking, I held on to my mother's faith because I knew if she believed this much, it must be for a reason. But um, overall, I think it's just that my prayers tend to be short and sweet and her, she tends to pray more, a lot more than I do. She'll do novenas and all that. But overall, I don't think it's a problem at all. I mean, I was raised in the church and my, that gave me a sense of identity. And I think that's something that they also experience in their life you know that that gave them a sense of identity and that was always a common ground religion or my religious views with theirs so i don't think for me it's it was a problem at all well because you guys were minors you were brought up you know um practicing your faith in in um in the catholic church now are there any um religious views that are dif- different religious views from your parents oh that's great wow that is awesome wonderful um how about culture what about the haitian culture that perhaps your parents are uh, pushing on you guys that um you, you you're not um as ex- you know receptive of i know you like the food i know you like the music what about the Haitian culture do you guys not like? Um, I would say for my um, family, it's the discipline aspect of it. And um, um, personally for my parents, like my mom was the main like discipline, um, disciplinarian of the parents between my mom and dad. And so um, it was kind of hard, like we were talking about earlier, to get your point across because it was more of you let's do what I say and that's the end of it. You don't really have a say in um, like what your feelings are towards the problem or like you don't really get to express how you're feeling or there's no really open dialogue between the parent and child. And so um, I think it has to do partly with, of course, how they grew up in like, you know, in a traditional Haitian household when they were growing up. Um, it's more like you do as you do as you're told and you don't talk back and don't, you don't really have a voice so um i think that's part of like the um cultural like the haitian culture between the like american culture do you guys think that we can find some common ground to um when you you're you're talking to your parents do you think you could use i don't know a different method of communication so that they can receive the message without seeing it as being disrespectful to them? It depends on the message, really. You know? Um, Say, in the aspect of discipline, it would probably have to be approached slowly over a long period of time so as to, you know, not immediately make anyone angry or, you know, come off as being disrespectful. In the aspect of other things, like, I don't know, 
maybe like you had said, favoring boys, you could maybe state your opinion and give reasons why you don't stand for it. Um, yeah, and things like that. Um, do you also think that, um, because do you, first of all, do you all speak Creole? A little yes? bit. I mean, really well, fluently? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then the next question is, do you think part of the problem is uh, poor communication? Is it language barrier, you think? More so for me, because I was born in Haiti, but then came here when I was six. I lived in Canada. I was, like, I was here young, so I kind of like grew up with the American culture. Mm -hmm. And I mostly did forget a lot of my Creole so when sometimes I would want to like translate some English words to Creole to like at least help her, like my parents understand, it was always like very difficult. And then they would try to translate what I said in English into a complete different other meaning. And I'm just like, no, no, no. And I'm just, and I would like try to think like a lot of times, like, wait, what's the correct word so that they could understand it their way. Mm -hmm. and that would probably be like probably one of like my communication barriers with my parents. Because because of the poor communication, it's going to create a lack of understanding. If we, the two people cannot really understand, you cannot find the right words in Creole, and then they cannot understand the context you're saying it in English, then it creates this whole misunderstanding. But what happens when there's a misunderstanding? Does everybody start getting angry and then they walk away? Or do we try? to you know try to help each other understand um it kind of really depends on how what the conversation was because like sometimes like if i am trying to get my point across and it's always getting like shut down for not like for like not understanding like at some point like i will i will literally give up i'm like all right that's it like i'll try but then other times i'm like okay like it's in my head, it's like there's no way that I could get my point across right now. So I'm just going to go and... So, so you just give up? Yes, I do. Okay. I mean, um, what about you, the other ladies? So what happens when you're frustrated, you cannot, you feel like you cannot be understood? Do you just walk away or you try? You continue to... I, for, for me, I, um, I usually just walk away. I just feel like it's not worth the fight. Sometimes, like, it just gets so well for in my household. Um, I do speak some Creole, but I'm not fluent. Fluent, and my parents spoke English to me, my brother, for pretty much all of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so even when we're trying to communicate, and they're really not really understanding where I'm coming from, or they, it's hard for them to see it from like our point of view. Um, it's at that point where it's like, okay, no matter what I say or how I say it you're not going to really get where I'm coming from. So there's really no point in like going forward. So we just, I just let it go. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, being that you're the youngest, tell us about your experience with that. Um, personally, I do try and um, I am fluent in Creole. So I always try to find um various ways to explain things to my parents so they can better understand because I do want to keep a strong relationship with my parents you know I you know like I said before I want them to like understand I, I always want them to understand where I'm coming from and I always want them to understand I mean I always <laughs> I always want to understand where they're coming from too so the feeling's kind of like mutual between me and my, my parents and I because they do the same thing to like when I don't understand something, they'll like try to find a different way to explain to me where you're coming from. Great. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Bishop Sansarik who joined us a little while ago. Hello, Bishop. How are you? Very well. I'm delighted to be with you, to share your company and to listen to you and thank you to be very fascinating and very very beautiful we appreciate your presence thank you so much 
Thank you. Okay, so um, what, are, what are some things we can do to, I guess in a way, because Haitian parents tend to see themselves as the head and you're the child, you're supposed to be um, um, the children where they, they, they just tell you, do as I say, and no questions asked. Um, how, how do you think, what can we do to, to kind of have our parents come down to our level to see things our way? I don't know, it, it, it's going to be a, a challenge, but what can we do to do that? Bring them down to our level to make them think of themselves when they were children so that they can have a different perspective. Because I, I feel like now that I am older, I feel like I can, I can relate to my mom more. We've become best friends, even though we don't agree on everything. Uh, if, if I sit down with her, although it does get frustrating, you know, I, I'll sit and say, no, ma, this is how it is. This is not the way things are done now because this is a different era. So what can we do? Because what I do with my mom that works is that I spend a lot of time with her. And I try to watch her shows. She tries to watch my shows. <laughs> and that does work. What have you guys tried to, to, to make that happen? Okay, so... <laughs> It's kind of a very similar thing that I've done with my mom. We literally sat down and we watched the similar TV shows, similar crime shows that we love. I've come up to her with books that I know she'll never read, but I'll give her a whole thought and a rundown of how it goes and why I love um, certain things about them. And we just, we talk. So when it comes time for me to ask her something um, important, she, I know that she understands me enough to know where I'm coming from. And I think through bonding with the, the parents, you, you can get them to listen more, you know, to you, 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 through bonding, you know, you get to have that experience where they're more apt to want to listen to you guys. So have anybody else tried bonding with the parents, spending quality time doing the things they like and for them to do the things that you like to do? Any other person in the group? Um, I think for me, um, I definitely, between my mom and dad, I definitely have a close relationship with my dad. And actually, me and my dad always talk like all the time, different topics it could be a movie a show we always talk about how he grew up in haiti what his experience was growing up um and for my mom we usually go out together to the mall shopping wherever it is and that's where we usually have like our talks um but also i think going back to your point is the i feel like it gets easier as you get older so when you're younger it's almost like they're talking at you and not talking to you but as you get older, you start to understand, oh, okay, so that's why you said that when I was younger. Now I understand that. And then um, you get to, you kind of get to see it from their point of view and their parenting and what they did right, what they did wrong. And then you kind of take that in and then you can use that, you know, eventually when you're older and you have your own family, you can kind of learn from what your parents did. And so I think it's definitely, as you get older, it gets easier to understand. It gets easier to have those conversations. Exactly. So in hind it's like hindsight, right? It's like, oh, they were right about this. It's just that I was not in that, you know, um, mind frame where I could understand it. Um, yeah, that's true. As you're getting older, you look back and, you know, at the stuff mom and dad were saying, how they were trying to protect you, but you didn't like it. And you're like, oh my God, that's why they did it. Now you're more appreciative of it, right? All right, exactly. so um, what, what other things can we do to actually bring them down to our level so that they can better understand your, your situation, that you know, you're trying to blend two cultures together? Um, I feel like um, I do this a lot. Um, I usually compare, like, I compare them to me, like, like I said, I try to understand where they're coming from. So usually it's like, so you think that 
this and that, like, I can't do this and that because you think, you know, so and so. And then they'll be like, yeah. And, and so I'll try to explain to them, like, I'll try to reason with them, you know, try to put my reasoning with their reasoning and, you know, try to connect them in a way. And, you know, like, the thing is, they don't like being told they're wrong and they don't like me educating them sometimes because you know i'm only 15 so it's like oh what if, you know you know you're only a kid. not enough wisdom yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's kind of hard sometimes but i just try to i just try to put both of our perspectives together to try and get them to look at things my way i guess mm -hmm. um do we also feel like um sometimes it's just best to leave it alone but not to abandon the fight but rather to just like okay walk away for a little while and then so that you don't instigate a fight and then it, it, it just blows up and there is no coming back, you know, for repair or understanding. So you just walk away and later on you revisit the issue. Have you guys tried that as well? Okay, go ahead, Miriam. So I think that's usually in um, conversations that you don't know how your parents going to react. Like say you bring up a topic and you immediately can read that you're, parents are not for it um those are the points where i personally would go all right well you know just a thought and i'd kind of um you know leave it there let it sit and sometimes i'll come back and be like you know what i learned today uh such and such a thing happened you know i could you know send you a video or you know we could talk about it and just leaving it there piece by piece um over a longer period of time can sorry, can really help uh, move a conversation forward or even an idea. And would you like to I agree on that? Sorry, yeah. I agree. I think sometimes what I learn about um, Haitian parents, you got to know which battles to take on, head on, and which ones to step away from and let it steep and let it sink in. And there's a reason why counting to 10 helps in most situations. After 10, you're not as upset and it's not as fresh or as raw as it was before. And definitely, I think the, the clash usually comes from teenage years though, because mm -hmm. like Tanya said, it's, de and like, um, it's definitely easier with age. And, um, also if we start small, I, I spend a lot of times with my mother and, um, small conversation takes away the strain of, um, of, communication you know like you start small little things little stories here and there and then when it comes down to talk about the important stuff you have a foundation you have a better way of approaching your parents and so forth all right and you wanted to say something yeah i was gonna say so like um yeah like putting like um little what i usually do is like if i know like they might not like completely side with what I like want to do or let's say I want to go on a trip or like I want to do this or that I always put like little little hints or like little little um just you know like just giving them little information bit by bit by bit until like and then I'll give them like a whole rundown I'm like hey like listen like this is what it is this is what it is I don't know yet if this is what it's gonna happen but I have a feeling that it will and then I just keep like feeding into their ears until like they're like oh okay like um i've always done like um i've always done that i've always like started small and then like always like get up from like whatever the situation or whatever the topic is i don't start with big conversations i'm like no you start with like the little the smallest piece of that conversation to like get it to the point that they have the foundations like um a couple of other people have said so that they get to understand more and more and more about it so then when you do ask let's say to go away, they're like, oh, okay, you have the information, you have this, and I can trust you to go type thing. Since we're all young ladies here, um, do you find that it's, there's more of a clash with mothers than fathers? I know yes. Tanya is a bit different because you're very close to your dad, but 
because for me, it, I clash with my mom because we have the same traits. And I don't know if it's because, you know, it's two females or we just have the same traits, but I clash with my mom quite a bit more than my dad. So, so do you guys agree? Yes, I agree. I think from the, from, with the mother, you're getting a woman's perspective with the um, father. It's um, I honestly, I think my father is a lot more lenient with me and he gets down stronger on the guys than he does for me. And also, cause I'm the daughter. So I, I know how to work with him. So right, right, right. it's usually easier, but um, mothers it's, I think it's a lot different. It's just because they're women. They know what, you know, they know. So it's, it's harder. Is it because they are women or women tend to be more, um, critical. They're, critical thinkers. they're more bossy. They're, um, more, um, they like to have control. Let's just say that. Do you, right? I see Tanya smiling. Um, they like to have control. I think they, they, they want to control the, the, the household. They want to be, um, in tune with everything that's going on, especially with the children, with their husbands. So most of the time I, I figure this is why, you know, um, the women tend to be the disciplinarians because they, they just take charge. You know, they have this natural thing about them that they just take charge. Um, and the eye for details. They, they're, they're in every little detail. I feel like something could easily slip the mind of your father, but your mom never. <laughs> so yeah. She, she picks every little detail as opposed to a man who just overlooks, you know, they look at the big picture. They don't look at all the details. Well, I think research shows that uh, women, you know, have this brain where they can multitask, which... Yes, <laughs> which explains why they're in every little detail, you know, in the house. The, nothing escapes them, nothing at all. So um, I have one last question for you. Um, do you guys feel that, let's see. Um, do you guys feel like um, if, if you guys shared, I know they, they're, they tend to be Haitian parents a little, they, they have anti-American uh, views with, regarding the, the, the culture, the American culture. Um, do you feel like if you were to expose them more to some of the American culture, they would be more understanding and by then become more receptive of it? I guess it depends on the parent. I feel like some are more set in their ways than others. More Others are more accepting. They, they're willing to meet you halfway or, you know, but other, some people just, just, what they think is best is best. And that's all. Mm. Anyone else would like to answer that? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead, Anne. Depends. Um, I was going to say, I feel like, um, since I am, I said I am the oldest and my sister is nine years younger than me. So like, I feel like with my mom, like with the parenting style, with like the difference between us a little bit, I feel like I've kind of like taught them more about the American culture to pave it a little bit easier for her and everything like that type of way. So like, I feel like, um, what I've taught them, they've also like taken like, oh, okay. And then like, sometimes I'll even like ease it to them like hey like yeah it's a birthday party like we know the parents i'll call like we'll call the mom so that you could get to understanding like oh it's not as bad as it is as going somewhere without the parent if that makes sense okay like, now did, did, oh go ahead miriam yeah going off of what um Anne said it's i actually didn't realize this was happening until about what this year um, there was a lot of things, a lot of things I wasn't able to do um, as a kid that, you know, over the years have been worn down and my parents have allowed my siblings to do. I'm like, it's not fair. Why? But it's just something it's like, well, you were the trailblazer. You had to make this path for the rest of them so that they could follow suit. 
and that's in just about everything, whether it is American culture, in the church, in, you know, school, you know, someone had to do it first, so it'd be easier for the others. And I'm okay with that role. Okay, ladies, pick one thing in the American culture you would like to share with your parents, but they'd rather not. One thing, each of you. Um, I'll go first. I would say the topic of just mental health. Um, mental health. Um, okay. And in general, I feel like it's not something that's um, talked about enough in the like Haitian community. And so I think that's one thing where if we can try to um, start that conversation and kind of help them to understand why it's an issue. Um, and, you know, it's even sometimes when, especially growing up in a Haitian household, you don't really have an outlet to to express like if you are going through something like you you know that your parents are not really going to understand they're not going to get it so like i think starting to have that conversation about it and like opening up and saying like this is a real thing and i think it's something you know um we can start to talk about and kind of open open that up so i would say that I mean, Tanya, I applaud you for bringing that up because that is a major, major issue in our community. Um, and mental health is a serious problem in this community. And we don't, it's taboo. We don't talk about it. We certainly don't want to um, think about it within the family that somebody might be depressed or suffer from anxiety, panic attacks, even feeling suicidal. So these things are very taboo and it, it's hushed. We, we don't talk about it. And I applaud you really for bringing that up. Um, because in the Haitian culture, let's just take, for example, depression. Depression is seen as, ah, you know, deal with it. it it's nothing. Look what I've gone through. My situation was much worse in Haiti. You have everything here. What have you to be depressed about? So those are the things that, you know, um, that are not taken seriously in the Haitian culture. We need to definitely have a show to, you know, to discuss that. So I applaud you for bringing that up. Thank you for that. Um, so who's next? Okay, so I want to talk about what, um, just understanding your child, your neighbor, your person all together because there have been too many times where you go, hey, I don't understand this. I'm uh, having an issue. I've hit a roadblock. I need help. And the parent goes, what do you mean you need help? When I was your age, I was walking mountains to get to school. Stop. You can figure it out. That sort of thing. Mm. And just even opening up to ask for help is difficult. Whether it is for things like school, like Tanya said, mental health, um, or even just the basic things like life, it's very hard to ask for help sometimes. Yeah, it's this lack of understanding because they haven't had that experience. And to them, because their situation, their upbringing was more challenging than supposedly what you guys have to endure, they don't see the issue. So you should just deal with it and then don't complain and move along with life. But unfortunately, you know, your generation is not like that. You guys need people to talk to and you, you, you need to be heard, really. And um, it's very important for, for, for your parents to understand where you're coming from. So who would like to tell me what in the American culture uh, that they really enjoy, that they would love for their parents to, sh you know, enjoy with them. Go ahead, Alexandrine. The ability to compromise. I feel like they don't know what compromising is or meeting the person where they are, meeting them halfway. Obviously, um, it's not set in stone. So that's where compromising comes in. You meet your child where they are. Obviously, what the technique you use with a teenager is not the technique you would use as, with a young adult. So I feel like that's the one thing that it's hard for them to understand the whole compromising. And that would be very helpful. That's what I would like to share. Compromise. Okay. Jennifer. Um, I think it's 
the fact that we're taught about mental health in school like i don't i'm not sure if like my parents i don't know like they were not taught about like depression and anxiety and stuff like that in their time like when they went to school and stuff so you know it kind of is hard for them in a way but you know in american culture we're taught about all that stuff prevent it how to you know deal with it and you know our parents wouldn't be able to teach us that stuff so i'm really thankful that they have that in the american school system great um and would you like to share some thoughts um i feel like everybody said everything that i was kind of thinking in my head as well because like yes i would love for them to be able to compromise and like be able to see our side of weight like our side of things as well as um, like Alexandrine said, uh, meeting us like meet like in the middle. You don't have to meet me all the way, but like taking steps to um, wanting to be a little bit closer from as parent and child, and like wanting to have that open communication and not be completely like shut down all the time from it. This is a yes or no question for you, ladies, because the culture is so so different and the views so different. Uh, when responding to life challenges or circumstances, do you feel like you think, feel, and behave differently than your family, than your parents? Wait, can yes. you repeat? <laughs> okay. When, when um, looking at um, life's challenges, when you're facing a challenge or a circumstance, do you feel like you think, you feel, or behave differently than your parents would? Go ahead, Alexandrine. Okay. I think I'm a combination of the two of them. Obviously, you know, the whole um, discussion of nurture versus nature, what your environment, you get a little bit from your environment. So a lot, a lot of it steeps in. So I think I deal, when I'm faced with a conflict, I think I take the positive side of um, my mom's characteristic or her, um, her um, perspective or her, the way she does things. And then I also take a little bit from my dad. I think it's, I'm a combination of both. I think things through, but then I don't, like my mom, she, she, she thinks everything very thorough. And then um, my dad is a man of, of um, he's not a man of many words. So he takes a step back and he sits and analyzes. He's very quiet and he analyzes things. I think I do the same thing quietly and I take a step back. If it's, ne if it's a confrontation with someone, I give them the silent treatment until I, could, until I could figure it out and sort it out in my mind. So I honestly, I think I'm the perfect balance between the two of them. Okay. Anybody who's poor opposite of the way their parents think, feel, and behave, when it comes to approaching circumstances and life challenges, polar opposite. Like your, your, your parents would do one thing and you would totally do the opposite or resort to different means than your parents would. Oh, okay. That's good. That's, you see, I, I, you just, I, this was a trick question to show you how like your parents, you guys really are without even realizing it. You, you guys are really like your parents in some ways and without really realizing it. I don't know if you guys noticed that because this, this was a trick question to see if you guys really think, behave differently than your parents. But no, I mean, they have a firm grip on you guys with the upbringing and you guys, you know, think alike and behave alike. And so I think that's a good thing. You know, um, so uh, without uh, further delay, I want to talk about the, the main points we want to leave for the parents in terms of how they can better understand where you guys are coming from. Um, I believe that love and appreciation for, for learning new things. What do you guys think? All right, so yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. I would um, say... Definitely um, listening more, um, listening to and, and trying to understand our point of view with um, certain situations, having an open dialogue, kind of um, looking at it from both sides. So like looking at it from how your parents would think and then having them look at it from how you would 
see the situation and just having that um, conversation I think is a good first step mm -hmm. and then eventually they'll be able to kind of understand oh, okay so this is how you think this is why you think that way and then um, hopefully they'll be a step forward in the right direction so I'm gonna um, focus emphasize a little bit on the love part I we cannot accomplish a lot with love uh, more than we could with just frustration and tension so uh, we're gonna approach everything with love right love uh, if, if if you guys um although you don't uh, uh, agree with your parents you know but if you if you use that love although you know there's misunderstanding you still respect them and approach the situation with love and respect you know with that alone you can nip a little bit at the issue and you'll find out as you're getting older you guys are gonna really become one in the way you approach life and how you see things and then the the um uh, the culture won't clash as much anymore because you know the love is there and the respect is there and then everything else will disappear and then you'll just just like we said the topic of our conversation today is bridging the gap um to really have appreciation for your family as well right I mean, you don't understand, you know, some of the uh, viewpoints that they have, but you still appreciate your family. And so I think, you know, that speaks um, uh, to a great deal of um, where the love comes from, where if that's the main thing, you love and appreciate your family. Again, we're going to see that um, bridge becoming shorter and shorter. Um, the second thing I was thinking is, not just expressing disappointments or disapproval, right? I disapprove of this. They have to also help understand why. Why are you disappointed in me making this decision as opposed to, well, I'm just disappointed, right? Or I disapprove of what you did and how you did it. But why? So I can have a better understanding so that way I know next time I don't do that. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, definitely. Okay. Anybody want to say anything regarding that? The, the disappointment and disapproval? Um, I feel like when they disapprove of things, they tend to judge us and, you know, what we do or say. And I don't think they realize how much it really harms us. Well, for me personally, you know, I don't like being judged. I mean, who likes being judged and especially when it's you know coming from your parents it's just it's really harmful in my opinion i'm gonna correct you on that a little bit jennifer not because i'm not understanding of what you're saying you know i'm older than you and more experienced so i don't think haitians haitian parents judge um i think how how would i say this it's, they're so the, the mindset it's so engraved in them that mindset that culture the upbringing their own experiences that it's when, when it comes out of their mouths it's not judging it's just that for for lack of a better word it's it's really poor communication skills okay it's not they love you your parents love you i mean they're providing for you but the thing is you feel judged because they don't understand you because they can't relate you know to your own experience as a first generation american you know they had it really tough and so they're looking at you like they don't understand it and this is why i'm saying the love and the appreciation that's where it comes in and over time you'll understand let me reiterate to you that you're not being judged okay it's just that they do not understand you all right go ahead alexandrine i was just gonna say sometimes it's hard for them to let go of the disappointment i think certain times they bring up something that you did when you were like a preteen you know and they still bring it up till this day so i think um it's just they don't let go of the disappointment. Obviously, my parents tell me all the time how proud they are of me. And, you know, they point out the positive and what I'm doing and everything. But sometimes it's hard for them to let go of the things that you did when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. Anybody would like to say anything else? We're going to move on to communication. 
um, communication does take time, even with your parents. And um, just like I believe Anne was saying before, she knows her parents well, so she knows what subject, subjects to tackle and how to tackle them so that the uh, communication line opens up so that she knows to build on that. So my advice to you is communication. Start with, hi, mom, how was your day? Hi, dad, those little things. And then, oh, by the way, you do it that way, you'll see that you, you agree, Anne, right? Look at you smiling. It does work. So communication, guys, okay? Start with the little things, you know, help them with the chores and how was your day, things like that. They'll be more receptive of whatever subject you guys want to talk about. Um, again, persistence is another thing. Uh, you're going to have to be persistent, right? Them trying to come to your side, you trying to understand them more. It's a long-term change. You know, persistence doesn't happen overnight. It's something that you keep building on and then you're going to have that long-term change. Um, we practice, 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 practice with the communication, right? We practice you know, the little things, I'm going to help you with the chores, and then I'm going to try a different way of communicating with you. Hi, mom, how was your day? You know, could you believe this happened today? Oh, by the way, and then you enter with your own um, subjects or topics you want to discuss with, with your family. Anybody would like to add to what I just said? Yeah, I was going to, I was thinking, um, Communication is especially the key because, you know, different situations display um, different lessons. So it's like, you know, you can't just tell them everything all out or, you know, it's not going to work out. So that's why, you know, you kind of, like you guys were saying before, you kind of just wait until things play out a little so you can bring up different stuff and it can you know make more sense to them anybody else would like to add to that okay last but not least patience if we have patience eventually you guys are gonna get older and it's gonna get easier especially for you jennifer because you're the youngest it does get easier trust me on that um, so if you guys don't have anything else you would like to discuss, it was a pleasure being with you young ladies, you know, I'm very proud of you all and, um, hang in there. It does get better. If you have any, uh, last thoughts you would like to share with us before we part ways, I would appreciate it. Go ahead, Anne. Um, because going back to one of the questions when you said what is one call um what is one American culture that I would want the Haitian culture to adapt to? Going away to school. That's one thing. Cause like for me, um when going like going to college and like doing all the college stuff, going away to school was it was like nope. I it was like commute, commute. Like I remember going um to look at LIU Brooklyn. And it was one of the schools I wanted to go to. And then we're going into the dorms. That's where I went to school. <laughs> we went into, like, the dorms. We visited the whole college and everything. Uh -huh. oh, I wanted to go here. And then um, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, it's it's in New York. It's a little far. It's not too far from Huntington. Like, you're, I'm still here, mm -hmm. but still away, in a way. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I remember, um, like, in my head, I'm like, all right, well, maybe I'll, it's close enough to dorm because you can dorm. And then I remember my mom just being like, oh, so how are you going to get to school too from every day? And I was just like, okay, <laughs> mm. I guess I'll commute. And then um, that's where I ended up at my school, which was another great choice of school. I went to St. Joseph's College, commuted back and forth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just wish that was never, I wish that wasn't really like going away to school would never uh, just, ah, just wasn't looked bad upon as much as um, a lot of Haitian parents do. That's true. That's a good point. Anybody else? Go ahead, Miriam. No, I, I kind of want to, if you guys saw my reaction over here. Um, yeah, I do very much agree with that. It's, I find it almost insane. I understand the parents' viewpoint that, you know, it's your first year away. You're still a kid. I'm not sure if you'll be able to take care of yourself well. 
but I mean, for schools that you love and you would love to dorm at, it really does, you know, hurt a bit. <laughs> and I know for sure I'm here now, mark my words, in the time where my youngest sibling has to go off to school, they will probably be able to dorm. It'll be okay then. <laughs> because it's always just like, nope, you can't do this. And then as it goes on, it's like, okay, maybe you might be able to do this. But we'll just see. Anybody else? Actually, going off of that, um, I am the oldest as well. And I feel like when you're the oldest, you're kind of like the guinea pig. You're like <laughs> testing. <laughs> you're like always the one that's always testing to see um, like what your parents will or won't let you do. And then your sibling can kind of fall back on that. And so for me, when I was actually when I was going to college, I pretty much applied to schools that were further away. And so um, it would came down to the point where it was like, you know, it's either this or nothing. So I kind of like it was kind of like an ultimatum. So like um, I ended up going away, and then my, my brother's now in college, and it's more of an easier conversation for him. Because I went away and I do not find and so it's more of like okay when he was applying it was like kind of understood that you know if you want to go it's okay if you want to stay it's okay like it wasn't like a yes or no thing so I think um you know like I said when you're the older sibling it kind of the uh, younger sibling gets to benefit from what you went through um, as an older child so mm -hmm. that's true but uh, in all honesty ladies uh, choosing a school out of state or far away from the house is, is is it because of the school or because we're putting some distance between the family and ourselves i think it's and <laughs> <laughs> so honestly is it putting a little bit of distance you know because yeah, um, well, not so much. Probably trying to like spread my wings a lot. Yes. Like wanting to experience things that I wasn't able to experience while being at home because it was their rules, their, this is what they wanted, this is how they wanted it. And like for me, like if I was able to go away, I wanted to be able to, you know, like this, uh, venture out a little bit and like see things that they didn't get the chance to and then I'd be able to tell them about it. But now that I'm like done with school and everything, I am, I do like go out, I do do stuff. And then I come back and tell them about it. And they're like, oh, I would like to do that too. So like now it works, but yeah, that was kind of my reasoning. One last thought regarding this um, topic. See, the, the, the thing is parents, Haitian parents have instilled those awesome, great values. But I feel like at some point they have to let the children go when they get to a certain age and let them go and spread their wings and believe that the values they've instilled in them will keep them on the right path. They, they have to trust themselves with that. Do you guys agree? Also with the dorming thing, I feel like it's more, it has more to do with the horror stories that they've heard the experience. So many, I mean, I'm not saying there are a lot of families, but they've heard so much, a good amount of stories about kids not performing at their best because they were away and they were they had more of that freedom that they were, were so they desperately wanted so i think that is the big part of it mm. maybe they should learn that different kids do different things you know it just because something happened with this particular kid does not mean that it's going to happen with the other you know everyone has their own story to 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 play out it right. doesn't mean there's, it's going to happen to your child just because it happened to five other children that you know of, you know? So I personally knew that I couldn't survive <laughs> dorming. So I, I, and also they knew that I was so attached. So it was more of a um, unanimous decision. But I do think with the dorming, it's based on the horror stories that they've heard. So just to play devil, devil's advocate, you know, I think that's the big part of it. And that's the sentiment I was just sharing that, you know, they've instilled those great values in us. It's just that like let them go and spread their wings a little bit and not you know, hold them captive in a way because 
at the end of the day, you guys are gonna get older and you're gonna have to leave the family home and have your own life. So in, and I think it, it's a great test to, you know, their values that they've installed in you guys, you know, go and let you guys spread your wings and test it. And if you guys fail, then you, you get, you know, you get shipped back home. Uh, again, it, 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 it's this bonding and the communication. And that, I think that's uh, what it comes down to. Communication, communication, and knowing at all times where your children are, what they're doing, and making, making sure you, you do know your children and you can communicate with your parents. I think that's the most important thing because a child should never feel like they cannot go to their parents if, if, if they're concerned about something that's going on in school or something that's going on with them personally. So work on that communication, girls. And as I said, my advice to you is make sure you do it with love and appreciation, patience, respect, and you'll see as you get older, it does get better. With that said, I would love for Bishop Sansalik to do the final blessing. I thank you all guys for being with me today. The best for best us. wishes for you guys. You guys are lovely. Hello, thank, you. Hello, hello. thank you. It was great it was participating. It was a delight listening to you. In a way, I'm amazed. I find you to be quite mature. Uh, most of you are, some of you are still in high school. Huh? Uh, who, who is in high school? Raise it's your hand. Okay, only Jennifer. Okay, all right. And who is in college? Some of you are in college? Okay. And any of you beyond college? I'm in graduate school for medicine. Graduate school. Because I, I think you are pretty mature. And what you are uh, saying is not proper to, to Haitian families. There is always some tension between children and parents. And the necessity of communicating is, is crucial. And you acknowledge this, and it's marvelous. Okay, so I congratulate you and I pray that you will continue to mature, continue to really to improve. And when you are successful in your family, you're likely going to be very successful uh, with your relationship uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the larger world. Okay, so continue. Now you are you go to church because you are from church groups beyond the Bible. Jesus is calling us to be in communion with him, part of him, to be part of this great mission of Jesus to change the face of the world. So let me close with a blessing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, I thank you for so many young ladies who are so mature, who really face the challenges of life with wisdom. I ask you to continue to bless them, to bless them, to enrich their mind, their hearts, their souls, so that like, uh, like young trees, so that they may bear fruit in life, fruit and flowers, so that their future will be beautiful, protected by your mercy. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. You too. Until next time. Until next time. Bye. 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 Bye -bye. Happy holidays. Merry Thank Christmas. you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. And Merry happy Christmas to all. From Radio Tele Solidarité. Thank you. <laughs>
Why we're there.